Hello Advanced Chem students. What we're going to talk about over the course of actually two videos are some chemistry related to alkenes. And I'm going to break this up into two videos because I want to make sure we spend enough time getting into some of the nitty gritty details that we need to appreciate about uh, this kind of reactivity. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some general reactions and then I'm going to show you some mechanisms. Now we need to keep in mind what mechanisms are, as we talked about during the kinetics unit. Mechanisms are sort of our best guess as to what's going on. We can't say that it's definitively the way it's happening, but it's the way we can understand how the chemistry is actually occurring. So the chemistry we're going to focus in on is the chemistry of alkenes, namely what happens to an alkene when you add something like a strong acid, say HCl in the examples that I'll be using, to an alkene. Well, the reaction is up there at the top. And so this is the overall reaction. This is sort of the fact of the matter. This is what happens when you react an alkene with HCl. So let's just be real clear about how I'm representing what's going on here. So we have the alkene on the left, and I'm drawing it in a representation that shows it flat, right? These wedges coming out at us are sticking out of the plane of the, of the screen, and those dashes are behind the plane of the screen. So I'm kind of showing this alkene, which is going to be flat. These are sp2 hybridized carbons, so this molecule will lie flat. So it's lying flat, and it's kind of sticking out and in to the plane of the screen. So what happens is we have an area of high electron density right there between the two carbons. That's a carbon-carbon double bond. And if you can remember from sophomore chemistry, we have a sigma bond with two electrons in it, and then we have a pi bond with two electrons in it. So this is an electron-rich region. This electron-rich region is going to seek out some electron-deficient regions, and we have HCl, which, as you know, is going to be a highly polarized molecule where we're going to have a positive H plus and a negative Cl minus. So at the end of the day, when you react a strong acid with an alkene, you get what I'm calling up here a haloalkane or a halogenated alkane. What we've done is I've taken the carbon-carbon double bond and it's been turned into a carbon-carbon single bond while we have created a new carbon-hydrogen single bond and a new carbon-chlorine single bond. So the net transformation is the elimination of the double bond between carbon and carbon and the creation of two new single bonds between carbon and hydrogen and carbon and chlorine. So that's the facts on the ground that we now have to try to explain. So I'm going to show you the mechanism by which this reaction is believed to occur, and a mechanism is what it is. It is our best, most educated, most experimentally well-supported idea as to how this transformation occurs. And I'm going to show you a couple of uh, kind of new ideas as we look at this mechanism. <clears throat> so on the bottom half of the screen here, we have the mechanism. The mechanism is believed to be a two-step procedure, two elementary steps, and there's an intermediate between the first and second elementary steps that is going to have its own kind of unique name. So let's take a look at the reagents. So here's my alkene down here on the bottom left again. Now I'm just showing it in a slightly more um, elaborate way. Instead of drawing the two lines for a double bond like I did up here, I'm drawing the one line for the single bond, and then I'm drawing these um, oval shapes to represent the pi bond between the two carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond. So this is showing you where the electrons are. Now the important thing to keep in mind is a pi bond is covering the space between the two carbons. So it's not really like these electrons are coming from a specific carbon atom, it's actually coming from between the two carbon atoms. So, here's how the procedure is believed to occur. I have my electron-rich alkene, and this is going to be called a nucleophile. Don't worry so much about the terms. And then I have my electron-poor H-plus of HCl. 
this H plus on the HCl is called an electrophile. And if you know your Greek roots, you know that the word or the ending file refers to love. And so what I have here is an electron lover, and I have here a nucleus lover. So the electron-rich region of the carbon-carbon double bond is going to quote-unquote attack the H plus of HCl. So what I'm showing here is I'm showing the movement of electrons. Now, one of the things students, have, I think, have a hard time understanding when it comes to organic chemistry is that it's the electrons that are moving around, or we believe it's the electrons that are moving around in space to break their bonds and to make new bonds. So here, I have a pi bond that is going to go ahead and attack the H plus of HCl. And I show that attack by using an arrow. So the arrow begins where the electrons are, and it points to where they're going to go during the process of this attack. Now, as the double bond attacks the H, at the same time, the H, or the electrons between the H and the Cl, are going to uh, get pushed over to being just part of the Cl. So I'm going to be making a new bond between the carbon-carbon alkene and the H, and I'm going to be breaking the HCl bond. Now, when this attack happens, what's going to ultimately happen is this carbon-carbon double bond opens up, and you see here I've created a new carbon-hydrogen single bond, and since I used to have electron density between the carbon and the other carbon on the alkene, I now have put that electron density to be just between one of the carbons and the hydrogen to make that new bond. In other words, the electrons that were here in the pi system are now here in the CH sigma bond between the carbon and the H, which leaves behind a positive charge on the other carbon of the previous carbon-carbon double bond. And this positive charge, because it's located on a carbon, is called a carbocation. So this is a carbocation intermediate, and it's got a charge on it. So things that are floating around in a system with charge are going to tend to be fairly reactive. So I have a positive charge on my carbon-based system, and thanks to this HCl bond being broken and the electrons being shoved over to the chlorine, I now have a chloride floating around. So this anionic chloride is going to attack, with its extra electron density, it will attack the C plus carbocation of the alkene to make a new carbon-chlorine bond. So the net result is I've gone from a region of high electron density in the carbon-carbon double bond of the pi system. I've pushed those electrons to create a new bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. I've pushed the HCl electrons over to the chlorine to make a chloride, and then the anionic chloride can attach attack the carbocationic carbon, and I get my net result of a carbon-carbon single bond that's left behind, a new CH bond, and a new CCL bond. This is our best explanation as to how the net transformation up here at the top is believed to occur. In the next video, I'm going to show you the reactivity of a specific alkene. Here, I'm not really implying any specific alkene, although it looks like I'm showing a whole bunch of methyl groups here. That's fine. You can think of it that way, but I'm not really implying that right now. But in the next video, I'm going to show you the very specific alkene, propene, reacting with HCl and some of the details that are involved in that, um, in that reaction mechanism.